Hello. Hello, everyone. Our topic today is the training of medical students in the very challenging process of breaking bad news. I'm Bruce Rosen from Israel Healthcare Highlights, and my guest today is Professor Orit Carnielli Miller, the head of the former head of the Medical Education Department of Tel Aviv University's Medical School. Welcome, Orit. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you for inviting me. Good. Let's get started by uh, letting the audience know a little bit about your background, your current roles, uh, please. So I studied social work. I was uh, studying social work, really looking for my way in life. And then um, when I did my dissertation, I said it has to be something with meaning in life, with significance. And I went to the person I wanted to do a supervision with, and I said, we have to find the right project. And I found the right project. It was about breaking bad news to adolescents um, about their medical uh, illness. And this opened a whole new important um, role in my life. So I went to a postdoc in Indiana University with two wonderful um, postdoc leaders and uh, went back to University of Haifa and trained. And now I'm um, in, in the Department of Medical Education at um, the Faculty of Medical and Health Sciences, uh, named Gray. And I was the head of the department for seven years. Now I'm on a sabbatical um, and uh, then don't chair of medical education. Terrific. Terrific. So, um, gee, why is it so hard to break bad news? They must they must do it a lot, unfortunately. And they would probably recruit people to medicine who have some degree of empathy. Um, why is it saying that, that they don't just pick it up on the job? And, and how bad is the situation out there? So imagine it for yourself. You've been studying for six years, medical school, a lot of information, a lot of things. And then you take, you start your internship. And you have a night on call, 4 a.m., you're entering a room of a patient who was suffering from some symptoms, and you have to stand there or sit there in front of his him and his wife and maybe a concerned adult child, and you have to share the news of a life-altering diagnosis. I bet you feel your heart, <laughs> right? Beginning. It's hard. It's difficult. And you don't spend a lot of time in medical school actually training toward the, this task because this task rely, requires you to pay attention to yourself, what you need, what can help you, how can you prepare, what do you need to know, what do you need to feel, how do you need to deal with that information. And you have to deal with different patients. The one who cries and the one who yells and the one who sits in silence. And all of these are very difficult. This encounter is critical because when it doesn't, isn't done well, then patients do not adhere to treatment, take it very badly, don't trust the medical team. I saw patients who disappeared for two months instead of receiving their help. And it doesn't only impact the patients and their families and their bereavement process, it also impacts the professional themselves. It relates to burnout, it relates to challenges, to difficulties, to dissatisfaction. So what are, I'm sure you, you, know, you teach this thing over years, but, but if you would give us the one minute version, what is the right way to break bad news? Wow, so the right break, way to break bad news is to notice that this is happening, because if you're a medical professional, sometimes, you know, you don't notice. It's not that bad news, but for the patient it is. So noticing that it happens, slowing down a little bit, um, really figuring out where the patient is, what they know, what they don't know, what do they expect, and then um, sharing the news in chunks and pieces while dealing with emotions that come. Gradually um, over time, it's a process, right? Rather than it over... is a process, but it's, it's about being present. And we're very used to doing stuff. Mm. But this is about being present. Okay, so tell us about the program you've put into place to, to train people in doing it better. So actually, um, as, a, as a school for many years, um, Daphna Meitar and others uh, that I've been working with did a lot of things and created a wonderful um, course that, uh, with oncologist Sharon Peles. 
And we have a 30 hour course, really good course. It has role plays, it has the model that we taught, it has patient encounters, it has a simulation. And really it's a huge thing, but our students don't practice enough. Practicing is very important, but we don't have enough time. We don't have enough facilitators. We need to train the facilitators to give feedback and do it well. So we have this kind of a process. And this year, I met Zohar El Yosef, who is an AI expert. And we said, that's it, okay? We need to add practice to our students. So we've developed an AI simulator wow. that actually allows them to practice in writing breaking bad news to a patient about, um, about any disease that we would want. And then they get reflective feedback and structured feedback based on the protocol that we have, we are teaching them. That's terrific. It sounds like it, it brings together both technology and compassion, which is really what, what we really need. Um, this has been very informative. Before we wrap up, do you want to leave our audience with any final thought? So I would say that um, this was surprising how well it worked. First, people were really engaged. If you try it, you, you, you really feel you're dealing with a patient. Our facilitators felt that who are senior physicians, our students felt that they, they felt that it was real, that they would wow. answer. And it was very, very informative in the, in, the, in the feedback. And you can actually have the feedback and take it with you because it's written. So... You know, a 15-minute practice increased their self-efficacy, decreased or increased their willingness to break bad news and not avoid those conversations, increased their willingness to, um, to take the protocol and use it in their practice, which was just amazing. And now we're taking it to other practices of basic communication and now just today I'm working with social workers who need to break bad news about the missiles now and mm. trying to figure out how to allow them practice some kind of practice and feedback before they go out to this horrifying um, job. Terrifically important. Professor Carniela Miller, thank you very much. Thank you.